All right, y'all, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, man. I told you I got a good episode for you today, man. I got my dog Sauce, the Sauce Kicks on today, man. Sauce, introduce yourself, man. And what's happening, man? It's your boy Sauce. You are Sauce on Twitter, but, um, you know, I'm a DSGB down south, you know, Georgia boy or Gator boy, if you account for my favorite college team. Um, I'm a proud product of HBCU. I'm a current mathematics cultivator. Um, I'm a sneaker, anime, music, sports, and also history enthusiast. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Oh, you said everything right there. So let's talk. There's a couple of things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk it up. We're going to be a good one, dog. DSGB, man. What does that mean to you, dog? I know I mean down south Georgia, but what does that mean to you? I mean, honestly, you know, just being prideful, you feel me, like, while I was raised and stuff. I mean, while I was raised that, but um, truthfully, um, I changed the meaning of it to me when I was in college. You know, I put it as Gator Boy instead of Georgia Boy because, you know, I don't really go for nothing Georgia. Um, only thing I'm proud of is being from there, being raised there, um, the coach and stuff like that. But, you know, just being a DSGB, I mean, it's, you know, me beating the system, not becoming a statistic in the state. Um, and, you know, just, you know, making something of myself, you know, being proud of where I'm from and, you know, making people back home proud. Yeah, man. You know, I'm, I'm down in Tallah- up in Tallahassee, dog. So down south Georgia, well, I didn't heard that all my life, bro. Well, my family up in Havana, so Bainbridge right there. So I didn't heard all that all my life. PT, Pastor Troy and all of them. Man, I was just listening to Pastor Troy before we got on, man. And you talk about, uh, you know, you beat the system. And, I, and Pastor Troy, man, he got a song. I forgot what name of the song it is. But he basically say, like, we know, I already know, all right, I figured out how this system worked, y'all, to get us in, in jail. So, you know what? You got it. I'm just going to go do what I got to do, man. And I was like, dog, bro. PT was speaking that back then, man. He he got nothing but respect up here in Tallahassee, man. That's the choice. Nothing For but sure. respect, man. I know he got, like, a TV app or something like that, like his own TV app. Dang, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's called, like, like that. it's called, like, Street TV or something like that, but he got his own app. On uh, it's on. I got it on my Roku, but uh, it's just like a stream. It's just like YouTube. Oh man, that's what's yeah. Up. I like that. Yeah, yeah. If you're an artist, yeah. you could just put your music on there, and he got you on. Um, but dog, man, you uh, you a history buff too, man. That's that's amazing, though. I got my minor in history, history education, okay, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So what what uh what uh subject do you teach? Oh, uh, right now I'm doing math and science. Math and, you know, and science. Yeah, two two of those subjects that I named out of the three, um, I mean, I was really good with. Like, I could do science, like I could pass the classes without studying mm-hmm. math. Like, all I got to do is just look at a problem. I can give you the the formula, the explanation, how to solve it, and just different um alternative ways to solve it. So, I mean, it stuck with me. So that's what I'm teaching. So history, man. What um, you in Jacksonville, bro? That's that's really to me. To see, I had a um, project when I was in college about St. Augustine and that yeah. um, St. Augustine movement, man, and how how important it was to actually getting everything in movement for what we see today. Um, but like, what 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 piece of history you like? What's your favorite part? So for me, um, it varies and like it's a wide range. So, like I love like growing up, like I just love stuff about the war until I actually started learning those pieces that weren't put in school and also the school books. Um, I love learning about, you know, um, how us as a black people came up, you know, like the guy who created Chicago, the founder, Gene Baptiste, you know, he's Haitian, you know what I mean? So just hearing how we we played all these, you know, pivotal parts and roles in America and also the world's come up is, to me, it's it's phenomenal. So that's why I really vibe with it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We'll talk about, I got something for you at the end of this. Uh, When we get off, I'll tell you about something I got in play um, pretty soon with that, man. But Dog, like, that's pretty. That's pretty good, dog. That's pretty cool, man. But, man, what college did you go to? Let the people know, because not only are you a history buff, but you went to a historically bad college, man. Let the people know where you went to school at, man. So, explain um, it. You already said what school you went to, but just explain about Edward Waters, man. So, um, I went to E Dub Edward Waters. Um, you know, it's located in Jacksonville. It was. It's actually the first and the oldest HBCU in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, it was burnt down several times and rebuilt. Um, they brought it to Jacksonville, I want to say the second, maybe third time. Um, you know, just being at E-Dub, I mean, to me, to a lot of people, it probably wasn't a great experience for them. But for me, it, it took a lot out of me because, you know, I'm from the South. You know, I was a minority growing up most of my life where being at HBCU, I was the majority. 
and I was fed not just you know like physical food but I was fed mentally emotionally spiritually and I was guided and mentored by a, by a lot of different people you know with different life experiences so like for example one of my favorite professors she um she was in school at the time when they had Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, funeral and she was one of the little um, ushers and everything so you know just having people like that people who experienced life and it, you know life for black people back when it was sicking um, dogs on them you know hitting them with water hoses and stuff like that just hearing their story and it just helped me one value my education two it taught me to finish what I start so I mean that's that to me that's what it meant um you know going to HBC because it was just my match well you said everything that's exactly how I felt man um going to a predominantly white high school, elementary school, middle school. On um, my 12th grade year, I went to FAMU High. Um, that, that was a blessing, man. Just to get introduced to that type of setting, man, to be to be in the setting where everybody in your school is black. It's like a couple of white people, but everybody in your school black looks like you. Y'all learning at the same pace, y'all. You know what I'm saying? That That's something, man. It really teach you how to come together, dog. And I really appreciate, you know what I'm saying, going to that school, going to that school, then also going to FAMU, man. That's a, uh, bro, uh, people don't. I saw a girl on Facebook talking about. I don't like to call people girls and stuff, but I saw a girl on Facebook talking about like HBCUs, um, and, and talking bad against them. She was a, a person of color, black girl. I'm like, come on, man. Like, no, oh, like if I really wish it's so funny. I hear people say when they go to P, uh, PWIs and they go to HBCUs, like they go for their masters, and they be like, man, I wish I came here. My whole my whole career, dog. My whole schooling, man. Yeah. I mean, it's like being at HBCU, I feel like you get prepared to become a black man or a black woman in this current America and whatever career field that you choose. Um, I mean, like I said, not everybody has the same experience, but I feel like with a little girl, um, I feel like her maturity level or just her knowledge and understanding isn't like up to par with her respect for HBCUs. Because for me, I grew I grew up around HBCUs. You know, my mom, her best friends either went to Cookman or FAMU. So while well, she went to Florida State, but you know, um, going around the class. Dang, bro, my mama too, the same thing. I don't know why she did that mess, but she said she wanted something different. So she went to FAM, I mean, she went to um, FSU where everybody else yeah. went to family and everything but yeah like just being around hbcus because matter of fact one of my mom's um i want to say it was either her great aunt or her great grandmother lived literally like two blocks from me dub so i got to drive through it growing up but i didn't realize what it was and you know just learning about it you know just sitting down and listening like actually getting to feel stuff like you start to see things differently so i feel like that's all she needs she just needs to experience it from like a, a spiritual and also a personal level to really appreciate HBCU. For real, man, for real, dog. But so you, so how was it like moving to Jacksonville and then living in Jacksonville? Um, you're still in Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville area. How is Jacksonville to you? I mean, for me, um, the experience, you know, it wasn't like nothing like too crazy because like I said, my mom's from there. Like her family um, was on the north side hilltop near um, Moncrief and everything. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just being there, um, you know, I had people look out for me that, or in Jacks, or not too far from it, but I mean, the city is like pretty much every every other major city. Like it has its flaws, but it also has its pros. You know, the the um the cultural standpoint. Like you have people from different races, religions. You know, all put together, and it's to me, it's a great spectrum. You know, what I mean, like you get to learn things about like people's history. You know, where they come from. You know, what brought their families to America and stuff like that. And I feel like that's you know, a dope experience to have, so. It is, man, it is, man. Oh, man, so you said you're a teacher, man. Um, and uh, how was this school year for you? I know it was, it was a tough, this, how was this pandemic? Let's, let's go back, let's go back. How was the, the pandemic and then going into this school year? How was that? I feel like the pandemic set me back because my first year of actually being an educator is when the pandemic started. So instead of me, you know, being in a classroom where I could practice different um, strategies and techniques, um, it put me it put me back and set me behind a computer screen all day. And um, like my engagement skills, everything was different by the time I returned back to the classroom. You know, a lot of things that I used to just be able to take care of a snap of a finger, I couldn't anymore. You know, I had to tap into myself and you know really get to 
dig deep and you know just different things that can help um you know make transitions for my students smooth like with learning and behavior and you know just life lessons so I mean it it was challenging for real for real like it took a lot out of me for real. yeah man because I was going to ask you man so every year you get like a new group of kids uh, to teach up so you, I know every year though you're finding out more and more about yourself in that process yeah um I don't know why so some of the things that um that I learned um that I just got to like truly understand was you have to come to work like come to school prepared like you can't wing lessons you can't wing you know the kids behavior issues and stuff like you have to come equipped with the arsenal being able to adjust you know what you have to teach being able to adjust your approach because every kid can't be you know yelled at because it'll turn them off and it'll cause a steep um collapse academically and you know, that behavior is hard to maintain because, you know, a lot of these kids are also relearning, you know, personal skills and how to act and behave in like a public setting. So, I mean, um, you know, like I said, what I learned is, you know, to be prepared and also um, being able to adjust, you know, because not everything is going to go according to plan. So just being able to adjust to it. Yeah, man. Um, so like so you did your, you did your internship in Jacksonville, too? Yeah, I did it at um, Northwestern before they converted to that little magnet school or whatever it is now. All right. So, like, how is it? Because I, I, I know being, you know, like I said, being around a, uh, being around a lot of us um, at, when I went to FAMU High, that was pretty good and, and interesting and have more Black teachers, man. How, how Can you see the importance of that up close by you being a Black male and, and, see, and having kids, little Black kids? Man, listen, having a black man in the classroom is vital, not just for black kids, but for white kids, too. Mm -hmm. so, you know, with, um, with black kids, you know, it changes the trajectory in which the overall learning experience goes. So, like, these expectations that are set on these kids by white educators and administrators and people from, like, the different districts and stuff, like, a lot of times it's unreachable and it's unattainable goals, but we have a black teacher there, we can kind of speak up for them and offer, you know, justice with, you know, just behavioral things and also academic wise. Um, you know, if you look at the equity, you know, the things that they need, like kids who are not just black, but the brown kids who come into the country being ELL, which is English language learners, you have the Esau kids, you know, just these kids that need all these accommodations. But um, my number one thing though, my number one thing is well, like for black and brown kids is just being able to speak up for them, you know, being able to come with come to them with a different approach, because most white teachers have a short fuse or a lack of understanding with how these kids are like I've seen it, you know, some teachers have a lack of compassion for black and brown kids where for me, you know, I'll pull them to say, hey, let me chop, let me chop, um, chop it up with you for a minute. You know what I mean? You know, I kind of give them. Um, uh, not necessarily a speech but you know just some life experiences and also some advice versus just yelling at them because kids don't always respond well to being yelled at you know what I mean like they probably can get that at home from their parents which they probably tired of but I feel like as teachers we need to come you know from a place of understanding because not everybody is perfect but for um, Caucasian students I feel like they get an opportunity and a chance to see a person of color a black person a black man with some authority and we can kind of help eliminate those stereotypes that was formed, you know, or passed down from their households. You know what I mean? So I feel like um, overall, like as black men, we get to serve justice and equity, you know, and we also get to um, lower the statistics of like um, the prison, no, the school to prison pipeline. So you feel me? So I feel like that's our contribution. That's good stuff, bro. That, that, that that's, that's truly good stuff, man. Cause, uh, like I said, though, you know, we, we need to be in the classrooms. I know um, I I thought about getting to Teach for America. Yeah. Um, that program um, and just going around and then just trying to move around in different cities. But uh, just, you know what I'm saying, be show my face in different cities, dog, and see what, what how those kids were getting taught in that school, how they were getting treated in these different cities, man, because that's something we don't really think about, dog. You know, I, I, I want to ask you, though, what's your favorite, uh, your favorite teacher show? Uh, my favorite teacher show back in the day had to be Steve Harvey show. Yeah. I mean, even though they taught elective classes, they were still there for their kids on an academic standpoint, a personal and also emotional standpoint and also mental. Like, you know, you had kids dealing with heartbreak, 
parent abuse, parent neglect, and how they stepped up and played, um, you know, another adult figure, like a positive role model in a way. So, I mean, stuff like that is what I like, you know, so. You ever watch Abbott Elementary? Yeah, I mean, currently Abbott is up there, but I don't know. I just feel like um, there's something missing from the show. Even though it's a funny show, it's a great mm -hmm. show, I feel like it's just something missing. I just don't know what. I just don't know what. Um, yeah, that's a my mom, uh, she just retired as uh, she was head over Marion County lunch, uh, school system lunch. Um, so I told I, I had uh, added uh, I forgot the the lady who writes I forgot her name, but uh, I had added her and was like, man, you need to bring in lunch ladies. So uh, that's what you need. And it's, so yeah. you're missing the lunchroom. You're missing the lunchroom, man. The lunchroom still popping like it used to be. Man, listen, yeah. <laughs> so um. So during the pandemic, um, like coming back this year, they made us, every great love had to have one class to aid in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so up until the point where, um, what was it? Up until the point where we stopped eating in the classroom, like it'll be days where admin will be stressed out because the upper great levels went, listen. So I was like, you know what? I was like, you know, that's my planning period. I'll come in for their lunch while my, uh, while my actual class is at their resource, their elective. And so I would go in there. Uh, you know, a lot of them are kids that I had in summer and after school programs. Some of them are kids that I either taught or they're related to kids that I taught. And so what I would do is, you know, I'll get their attention. I'll talk to them soft-spoken, you know, I'll ask them, hey, can we do this? I was like, hey, let's do that. I was like, if we can't do it, this is going to have to be the consequence. And the kids listen, you know what I mean? And it's not because they're afraid of me. It's because that I don't intimidate them. I don't, um, you know, write them off and, you know, just treat them bad. You feel me? So that's that's what can separate me from other teachers and stuff. Do you still remember your favorite teacher or your professor in college? Um, my two favorite professors in college, they both passed recently. Oh, um, I had one, her name was Miss Arnold. She taught art and also some English courses. And then Mr. McCullough, he's a, um, actually a legend in Jacksonville. He um, taught at different schools, athlete. Um, he was also an Omega. So um, both of those, both of those professors passed recently. Um, they paid pivotal roles for me outside of the academic standpoint in college. Like they were there to give me life le life lessons. Um, they provided uplift where it was times where I felt like leaving school, transferring, um, dropping classes, changing majors. They wore it with me. They fought with me. They fought for me. And, um, you know, they really made being an E-dub, you know, worthwhile. So I repeat it. That's speaking back to, um, man, that's speaking back to, you know what I'm saying, going to HBCU, dog. If they hard on you, but they they want to see you. They want to see you. They don't want to see you fail, bro. They don't want to see you fail. Exactly. They gonna do what they need to do. You know, you're not gonna. They not gonna just give you the grade. You are gonna have to do a little bit of extra. Earn it. Yeah. yeah, they gonna make you earn it, man. But that, that's what you need, though. That's exactly what you need, man. Uh, but dog, man. So we got you teaching. We got your job. Let's get why I got you on, dog. You tell them about your pod, man. Tell them about cause. You got to see. You got to see how he played. He played it in, man. The kids respect him because they see his fit, dog. They see the shoes, man. Tell them about your pod, bro. Tell them about your pod. So, um, for me, um, I ain't know really what to get into a pod about, but I thought about it. I was like, everybody does sports. People do, you know, movie history reviews, and so I was like, I have a passion. If you see behind me, you know, I got a, got got a wall, wall full, and it goes down to the floor, and then there's some other racks too in the house, but um. My podcast called Sauce Kicks is about sneakers. So what I do is I bring different people on who have love and interest in sneakers and they get to share their story of sneakers through their eyes, through their voice and whatever. And, you know, I get asked some different questions, you know, how they feel about certain things. Um, also about the pod, you know, I get to bring down or break down, excuse me, you know, different content from my eyes. You know, I'm unbiased. You know, I don't necessarily try to follow trends or do stuff to be accepted. You know, I talk about things that actually is going on and I just give my perspective. Also, um, I talk about how you can build up your collection, how you can maintain it. And also, you know, just the proper necessities that you can have, um, you know, to help you take care and store your sneakers. So, hey, you know. what, what, what's the saying you always say? What, what, you like oh, it? You like what you, what, 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 what is it? You like man, what you like? Is, is buy what you like buy, yep. what you because I see it all the time people are trying to fit in and you know just be accepted and so I feel like me personally like I ain't never really want to be accepted like mm -hmm. I wanted to be respected but you know I didn't want to have everything everybody else have and so like I know personally like everybody has a particular brand or like silhouette that they like so 
for me, um, I feel like that saying, it goes with that. Like, don't spend all your money, like your rent money, your your, uh, your light bill money, your um, Wi-Fi money, trying to fit in with the Joneses. I mean, just be yourself. I mean, that's the best advice I can give. To you, what's your fate? What's, what's your top company, Uh, your top shoe company? A brand, what, what's yours? And see, I want to say Jordan, but that's pretty much everybody. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with this. So outside of Jordan's, I'm going to have to go with um, Sakami or Sakami, however you want to pronounce it. So that's man, what I'm well, yeah, because I was going to ask you about, I heard, man, I heard you on the pod say you ain't really rock with New Balances. But, but, uh, but I kind of like, I kind of think that Sakonis and New Balances almost like each other. They all yeah, like yeah. each other, but yeah, I I I I I fuck with I rock with Sakonis, man. Cuss, I was supposed to start cussing, man. My bad, y'all. But dog, uh, <laughs> but the New Balances, man. I I love the New Balances, man. Uh, I don't know, it's because I like New York rap. I think it's because okay. of how they influences. How much is how I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but the influence. So like, what do you think is the major influence on shoe that's driving the shoe company in the shoe business right now? Yeah, dog. Boy, I see a pair of them right there. The Sakonis right there. In the- oh yeah, they um yeah these right here dead stock. Those are great two thousands. Um, we gonna ask but- you about dead stock. I'm gonna ask you about the dead stocks too. But uh, but, wait, yeah. I mean, to be real, it's about um. I feel like social media is the biggest driver for demand when it comes to it comes to sneakers because you know you have so many people who let rappers influence them. So for example, like right now, mm-hmm. the sneaker community would not be the same. If Travis Scott wasn't wearing Jordan ones mm-hmm. and the Dunk Lows, that seeing him in those it drove people to buy them because the only people who really rocked Dunks back in the day were skateboarders and people who were kind of emo or their parents just bought in, bought them whatever shoes. But other than that, people want people ain't like Dunks like that. Now for me, I respect Dunks, but I don't fully you know like them. So I have maybe four four or five pair of dunks and it's dunks that i actually wanted versus me just saying oh they, this coming out oh i want this i'm buying it like i mean it's it's pointless because at the end of the day it's trying to keep up with the joneses but it's that um that social media man that's what's really driving the demand of it up like um general release shoes they drop a couple hundred thousand pairs like statewide and you know some people get them early and then they'll put them on a resale app like people want them now like they want to say oh i got it like it's like it's like it's like they're trying to portray an image or something. To be real, yeah, bro. I feel like yeah. Wrapping it up. You know, I, I'm we be chilling on the Smoke Screen Podcast, man. I appreciate y'all for listening. Um, I'm, I'm, remind me about something when we get off, dog. I got a home by that owns a shoe company, a shoe store up here in Tallahassee, down by FSU. And he, you coming to the Florida Florida State game this year? I don't know because they got that game on the Friday. Friday. I'm, yeah, I'm right. Oh if, if you come through, bro, I'm because I know he's gonna be at the game. His name London, but he right mm-hmm. down from um Dope Campbell, bro. I if you I tell you give it address, but you might want to get him on the pod, bro. He he's a big Oregon fan, but he uh he 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 bought them shoes, man. We used to have a store called Phase One up here. They would okay. get, like kill the dunks, um, man. Because I used to like dunks a lot because I listened to Spitter, you know, currency. Yeah. He was with the dunks heavy on, um, but uh the price of them just got crazy, man. Them things used to be like. $70, $80. Now you, yeah. you're going to how much a pair of dunks gonna run you now? Um retail dunks are 100 or 110, but mm-hmm. retail, man, it really depends on the colorway, the collaboration, because them things can go for easily 300 400 But I know a lot of dunks are sitting below 200 now. So like it's a pair I got, it's called the Golden Rock. They sit behind me over here. I got those to raffle. They were 115, but like on the resale apps, they like 150 and up depending on your size. So some dunks actually not too bad, but you got some crazy ones like um what's a pair? They got some, they got this fruit pack. Like they got one that's pineapple, blueberry, and mm, apple, or, no cherry. They're going yeah. for like three, four, five hundred. So I mean it's it's crazy. Dogs. That's that's freaking crazy, bro. So, like I heard you, uh, you t- you said raffle. I was listening to one where you had about trade with Trey Dean on, yeah, for the safety Trey Dean. Um, so like, how long have you been into the raffle game? Like going in and doing the raffles. 
Um, so for me, um, I was an in-store guy. Like I didn't like doing online and stuff. Like I actually like going up to the store, picking them up, going home with them that same day. I didn't get into raffles until like um, undergrad days. Like you'll have to do the ticket and stuff, like go up to like the footlock and stuff. But mm-hmm. like the online raffles, I didn't start that until about two, maybe three years ago. Cause that's when it started picking up heavy, the online stuff. So. I got you, man. Um, But explain the dead stop. Explain that to folks. So with a dead stock, it means it's a shoe that's brand new, never been tried on, never been relaced, nothing like that. So it's basically a shoe that hasn't been rocked yet. So that's what dead stock is. All right, how many de- dead stocks do you have on hand? What got them, dog? <laughs> 23, 23. Oh, so you, you, ever, you ever resell and sell them off? Sell any of your shoes off? Um, not really. So I've only so recently. Um, I went to this shoe store here in um at one of our malls, mm-hmm. and I got rid of some shoes. I was like, you know what? Um, I want to start decluttering like kicks that I have that I haven't worn yet, and just kicks that I don't really plan to wear because I don't like them anymore. And so um, I don't really resell. Like I'm in the shoe game to acquire stuff that I'm feeling like stuff that I actually like, but. Um, I've resold those Toro, not Toro, those Raisin Bull Fives. Um, I was like, I didn't really like them because I didn't know how the material was going to look. So when I got them in hand, I had already made the sale through eBay. But when I got them in hand, I regretted it because them things was clean. It's the ones who just dropped um, last year, those Red Fives. And then, uh, let me see what else I sold. I sold my Court Purple Ones and I sold my Oreo Fives. So reselling like those on three that I sold. How do you feel about the Jordan 2s, bro? Jordan 2s? Honestly, I feel like Jordan 2s are slept on, underrated. Um, now, personally, like, if you look at the sneaker, like, facts to history, mm-hmm. it was Jordan hated. Now, he may, have hated it. he may have hated it, but I, I ain't like I like them. Like, I had Reggae Raheem's back in 20, 2010, 2011, but I actually like that they're coming out with them again. Like, I'm seeing people buy them, but – I don't think they buy them. For, well, I can't judge why they buy them, but I feel like they're buying them, and I feel like that's going to increase the value and the respect for them. So. I got you. So, do you, do you buy? Do you usually do raffles? Or are you try to you buy off hand? You buy from people like selling. You ever buy like from people just selling them, selling theirs like you would, or do you usually try to just get it from the retailer? Try to go retail because it's cheaper, and it's also like you can guarantee authenticity. Versus you go to like a sneaker convention, you buy some like, I know for me, um, it's a couple of methods that I use to determine if shoes are real or fake, mm-hmm. but I don't really want to go through that. So I feel like if I can't get them for retail, then I'm just up the creek. But um, there's certain like reselling apps and sites that I do trust and I do cop from if I miss out on a shoe that I want. Have you ever came across a fake one? Um, actually, uh, like the purchase, yes, but I haven't um bought it. It was, um, so back in my undergrad days, like we dug, it was this um, like, who was it? It was this um, advanced auto place, mm-hmm. and they had this tent full of like kente cloths and stuff. And so, um, the guy had some shoes. I'm like, okay, these look nice. And I actually looked at them; they weren't real. And what gave it away was the price that he was offering them for. And I was like, okay. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm straight. He sure looked like he likes you. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. So, and I was like, Man, I could. I was watching the Hoppy on TikTok. I was watching TikTok. And, uh, they, have you ever been to a convention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to a couple of them. Yeah, I've been they, to some in Orlando and Jax. Yeah. I, I, man, I bet the ones in Orlando probably good, man. Probably oh, yeah. Because, I, I, like, she was on, I think it was, it was like, up north somewhere. But they tried to run one past her, and she looked at it. She was like, "Come on, man, come on!" It look, I was like, "The naked eye, it looked, it looked real." But she looked, and then she pointed something out. I was like, "Oh snap!" Like yeah. she was like, "Look, you got two lines right. That two lines not supposed to be there." Yeah, exactly. I'm like, "Dang, dog! People just just get away like that, man." You ever tried? I, I got a lot of homeboys. I got some homeboys that they color their shoes. Do you ever try to customize them yourself? Um, nah, I have a want to... boy who I brought on the pod um, when I first started. Um, he customized, he went viral. He did, um, that Asia Wilson girl, the one who played at Baylor, I think she won mm-hmm. a ship recently. He customized some of hers. She has some KDs where he, uh, or no, Kyrie's, excuse me, and he put the anime Naruto on them. But me personally, I haven't been feeling like customizing mine, so no. Nah. 
I got you. What's your cra- What's the craziest collection you've seen? Like you've heard of? Like um, like that's out there that says, man, that person has crazy. It's like a myth or an unknown fact that somebody out there. In so, the world. so as far as me with sneakers, I watch a lot of YouTube and um, I look at sneakers only when I'm feeling because I can't watch that stuff all day. Like I, I be burnt out. But um, personally, I feel like that boy Mayor up in New York. Um, looking at the culture, like you look at some rappers, um, you can say Lil Yachty, you can say Offset, um, those two guys. Um, you look at DJ Khaled with his collection, you look at Drake. Um, and then you look at, let's say, comedians like um, DJ Epps. He got a lot of like those Jordan schools, like PEs. Like he had our, our Gator Force, he had some Georgetowns, he had Oklahoma's, like and guys like that have the same collection. And then if you look at it from like a sports standpoint, um, PJ Tucker got a lot of heat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's yeah. some day or well, some games where he's wearing two, three different pairs of sneakers. Pair like shoes. Mm-hmm, he'll warm up in a pair of somebody's customized, personal like PEs. First half he's in a somebody else's PEs. Come out halftime, he in somebody else's shoes. So I mean, it it varies for real. Um, I saw I was watching um Nate Robinson. He had he has like a YouTube thing, but he had um. Mike Bibby on there. Mike Bibby got a crazy collection. Man, he had some crazy peas back in the day. People like him, Juwan Howard, Chris yeah. Weber, um, Rip Hamilton, Ray Allen, like guys like that, man. <sighs> oh, yeah, and Gary Payton. Gary Payton, the reason why we had those um those black and yellow 12s, because he had a um, pair back, I think, back in 96 or something like that. Yeah, man, like, I yeah. see that's crazy you talk about that, man. I saw a video. It was so, it was so heartwarming, warming, man. A, a dude, a black dude, was just riding his bicycle. And this white kid was just following him because he wanted to exercise with him. Dude went and brought him a, bear, a pair of black and yellow 12s, man. I was like, man, that's, that's amazing you brought that up, man. But what's the craziest collection you've seen up close with your own eyes? Okay. Um, so my late Uncle Pokey. Um, Boy, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, dog. 300 pairs of kicks over 300 i mean he had different houses closets full hallway full like he even had separate rooms just shoe boxes up to the ceiling like it was hard to maneuver through he even had storages full of shoes like he had all the jordans he had the um the soldiery rebox he had um the four oh man he had so many air force ones he had almost every colorway every colorway and then you know the occasional 50 to 100 you know all white cocaine but i mean <laughs> I mean, he he had some pressure for sure that's why I, i'm so happy you you, you said that cause i was trying to figure out a way in my head how to work that in because i was listening to your episode on well i heard this one uh, uh, released but you were talking about how what got you into the shoe game and what really got you in well, let the folks know what really got you in man because you kind of just spoke on them but what really got you into the shoe game so um it was like it's three main people that I look at. Um, two of them are my uncles. One is my um, my dad's sister's husband. His name is Rashard. Um, he grew up a Jordan fan, so he grew up back back then. He even wore number twenty three when he played ball. But you know, he kept him and my little cousin with Rashard the third. Like he kept them in retros all the time. So seeing that made me like them. But my um, mom's brother, like her my late I mean her late brother. Um, I mean, his collection was insane. And so that just drove my interest in shoes because, you know, back to school shopping, like getting shoes was really the start of it. But seeing them with it, it elevated. And then pop culture, like seeing them in videos, movies and TV shows is what drove me like to liking them. So my favorite TV show is Seinfeld. I'm probably like one of few, like a handful of black people actually like Seinfeld. But um, I mean, that man had the the um, the airwalk. I mean, what the? Not the airwalk. What thing is called? Um, I don't know. They something. He had Harachis. He had the Cardinal Sevens. He had the Sport Blue Sixes. And you know, just seeing that, like, it made me want them. So I mean, if I got to see it in person, I got to see it in a store. I got to see it from my family on TV. That that's what drove my interest in sneakers because I felt like that's the best um, accessory to an outfit is your sneakers. So. You know, man, that's crazy, dog, because I'm on record saying I don't really, I ain't really vibe with Seinfeld. I'm a everybody loves Raymond type of guy. Okay. But Seinfeld, I I didn't kind of dabbled around and been watching it a little bit, and it's, it's pretty funny. It's it's like humor, humor you got to really pay. Once you get older, you start 
realizing the humor a little bit. I couldn't catch it really when I was younger. But now yeah. I got older, like Kramer, even though Kramer will be on some racist stuff now. Nah. But yeah. Man, I didn't find that out about Kramer until a few months ago. And so um, I bought like the little Funko Pops, like kind of put with my accessories and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was mad because I got, so I got two Jerry's and then I got one Kramer. Uh-huh. Boy, I wanted to, boy, I wanted to send that thing to the moon, boy, when I found out about that. Yeah, him I was and, researching it and him and Don Imus, man, they used to be on some other stuff, man. They be saying some crazy. I ain't stuff. never know that, bro. Yeah, I used I to listen. To I, was Tom Jordan, I used to listen to Tom Jordan Morning Show all the time, and I remember them saying that about when he got in trouble by saying that back in the day, man. That, that was crazy, dog. But how you talked about Seinfeld, man? What what other who what other people like you think that kind of drove it? Like as far as the nineties, because I feel. That that night they held that on TV held shoe game on uh, Listen, in the night. I can I can give you plenty of examples. Um uh, one in particular that I know a lot of people in the black community can um you know agree with me with is Spike Lee. Like that's one person um mm-hmm. actually drove it. And if you look at athletes, Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, like I named those, um, you look at Kobe, and then too, the shows like Martin and Fresh Prince, like how Nike would give them shoes before they actually release to display them on TV, you know what I mean? Like, it was plenty of shoes. Um, Roseanne, um, one of her sons had some eights on, I believe, on the episode where he was sick. He did, like, bro. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hold on, y'all supposed to be broke. Man, <laughs> listen, she put them, I think I think it was the Aquas. I think he had the Aquas on. And, like, she put it his, them. randomly put the shoe on the table. And I was, what the, I was like, well, why you put the dirty shoe on the, on the table? I was like, that's some, I can't say it, but... <laughs> Product you know. placement, trying to get that, that that check real quick, man. Man, you know, I look, <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, you like you see it all the time on TV. Just like you know, not to kind of backtrack away from sneakers, but mm-hmm. shows like Martin Living Single. Every all these black shows in the nineties, they were sporting HBCU paraphernalia, and I felt like that was a great promotion to attend black schools. You know what I mean? So I felt like that was pretty dope. That was man. Outside of that, that 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 really was dog. Um, and you know one person that I, I know it's outside of black, but Michael J. Fox. I I like the Back to the Future, uh, movie. And, and he, he was he was killing the the shoe game too back then, man. I, it's so sad he got Parkinson's, man. It's so I hate that man, but he he pushing through. But oh man, I hate that for him, man. But um, but yeah, yeah Michael J. Fox really, uh, he really dog. Do you know of any Florida shoe designers? Not that I know of. Why do, why do you think that is? What is it hard to get into the game? Other well, we see from Kanye how hard it is. Yes, how hard it is to get in. I mean, if you if you look at Kanye, I mean, the, the city of Chicago. That man, that history, that that history is deep. But um, as far as Florida, I feel like it's probably a lack of interest or resources. You know what I mean? Like. I feel like in Florida, everybody, if they're not playing sports, they're trying to do music. They're not trying to do music. They go to the military or they go through other career fields. I just feel like um, it's not something that a lot of people are probably into in, in the state, honestly. I got you, man. But, uh, dog, it's another question I got to ask you, though. It's another question I got to ask you. As far as athletes, we talked about Michael. How how and we gonna close it out pretty soon, man. I uh, appreciate y'all for rocking the smoke screen podcast, man. I'm chilling with Sauce Kicks, man. The Sauce Kicks pod, bro. Bo Jackson, man. Bo Jackson. But you know when one I came across, dog. I came across and I forgot all about it. Arthur Ashe and his Adidas that came out and how they only. I don't think they only made like thirteen hundred or some of those. Um, but his Adidas, man. Uh. Then the Griffies, the Griffies, man. How 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 you where, where Griffies sit at on yours, man? On your list. Um. So Griffies are probably like late, like far back twenty, probably like twenty five. Mm-hmm. I respect them, but I mean, it's a lot of other heavy hitters in front of it. Like you got to respect the phone posits. The, pe- the um the penny ones the cortez um i mean you got the rebar and so forth that i love and then the different jordan silhouettes um you got the kobe sixes you got the kobe k8 um 
you know, KB8s when he his first shoe with Adidas. I mean, um, the the Van Yacht Clubs. I mean, it's it's some to me, it's some other shoes that I like over that. But I mean, it's still a classic shoe. Like I feel like it's it's still a dope, a dope silhouette for sure. At you, man. So um, you're a teacher. You in the school system. Parent out there need a new a need a shoe. They looking for a new shoe for their kid for the school year. What's a nice, what off the top of your head, a nice price shoe for the kids for the new school year? Um, depending on the size, I mean, like with grade school size, like their shoes are about under a hundred. If not, I feel like the the most expensive will be probably around one twenty, one fifty. And I mean, you can go with the different Air Maxes, like Air Max ones. You can go with the Vapor Max. You can go with Forces, um, Blazers. Um, if you really on a budget, I mean, you can go with A6, you know, you can go with Vans, because Vans is real cheap, Vans is real cheap, um, I'm trying to think of some more, you can go with Fila, you can go with Champion, I mean, to be honest, it's not really about the name brand, but how you wear a particular brand, if that makes sense, um, how, like, how are you sporting it, like, how are you are putting it together, but um, if it's somebody, like, low income, I mean, you can go pretty much any shoe store as long as they have a, a small size you good you in there like you're not gonna spend over 200 to let you get in more than one pair so now if you address shoe type of dude what what's a shoe that you would go to what's a good a uh, good entry intro shoe to a tennis shoe um so if somebody is wearing like a dress shoe and they're getting into sneakers yeah they're getting into sneakers honestly I can't even answer that. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I, I gotta go back with the model. They have to buy what they like, honestly. Um, if you want something as far as comfort, you can look in New Balance. You can look into um, Sakani or Sakani, how, again, however you pronounce it. Um, the different Air Maxes are comfortable. The Vapor Maxes are comfortable. Um, if you get Jordans, it's basically how you lace them. Like if you get the laces and they're like um, extremely tight and you have them tied up, like if the laces aren't like hanging on the side, then your feet is gonna be hurting after a few hours. So it's best um, to lace your shoes properly. And that's the best advice that I could give for that. I got you, man. Uh, so do you like, how, how's the podcasting going so far? Oh man, I mean, what podcasting with me, my biggest takeaway is being able to I'm not going to say enjoy, but, you know, be able to tolerate my voice because I don't like how my voice sounds when it's recorded. But um, personally, I feel like it's helping me to gain more knowledge because I have to do a lot of research before I record. Um, also, um, just it's working on my communication skills. Like, I feel like it's helping me perfect it. Even though um, I grew up around a lot of people talking all the time, I still felt like my communication skills weren't up to par. So I'm becoming a better listener a better thinker and all that before I even react and respond. So I feel like this is great. And then plus I'm getting to learn from a lot of people as they come on my pod and everything, you know, um, I get to look at sneakers from a different standpoint of versus just being somebody who just buys and consumes sneakers. Like I'm getting to look at how these corporations are being petty with each other, throwing up lawsuits. You know, I get to understand the inspiration to how these shoes were made and stuff. So I feel like it's, it's going pretty good. I meant to ask you about that too. If you want to speak on that real quick about that lawsuit part. Man, um, I heard it on the last wait. episode. I heard it on the last yeah, episode. So, so if you want to plug your last episode too, the name of your episode. Um, it was kicking it with TZ. That's a homeboy um I met through undergrad. Um he, he's a big gator fan too. Um, and it's also called Swoosh versus Three Stripes Part Two, because back in um December, Nike had a lawsuit with um, Adidas for their fly net patents. And so Adidas said, well, hey, you know, you blocked our exports from coming in the country. So, you know, it was, it was over 49 different types of shoes. And so it was like, hey, we need the court to pay us for that because that's, that's damages, you know, that's emotional and monetary damages that they face. And so Nike um, is also being sued based off of um, these apps. So like the little fitness apps, like um, the confirmed app and the sneakers app where you can go in and buy the different Nike and Adidas apparel and stuff. Um, they're saying, well, we're the first ones to do it and stuff like that. So it, it's just um, a petty case between the two biggest shoe companies. That's all. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. When I heard that, dog, I had to stop. I was at work 
I had to stop what I was doing and say, hold up, and do some research. Like, whoa, bro, I ain't know they was, I, I ain't know they beef like that. Like, shoot. And another thing too is the um the safe the um self lesson technology. Like um the everybody know about the Air Max from back in the day. Like you said, um Michael Fox with the um Back to the Future too. Mm-hmm. And Adidas saying they had the patent first, but that was back in 04. But the Air Max that came out what the 80s, so yeah, it's it's mad petty, dog. It's to me, it's lame. I feel like what they need to do to squash it is do a challenge like who can sell the most, whatever, and whoever wins that they get to keep that. But personally, I feel like they both should be able to coexist, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's, I mean, that's just the maturity side of me, but with them two, they they tripping. Got you, dog. But listening to the Sauce Kicks pod, what would they get, man? What would the people that's listening to Sauce, Sauce Kick pod get that they wouldn't get from other podcasts, shoe podcasts? I mean, they're going to they gonna get the sauce. You know, I'm bringing on, like, real live people, and I'm not going for just, you know, celebrities, athletes, and people that know the right. Like, I'm bringing on people to express, you know, how they feel about singers. Like, they, they getting to explain it through their eyes you know, their personal stories, their upcomings. And then also, you know, um, when I'm putting people on stuff, like I don't gatekeep, you know what I mean? Like I tell people about, hey, you know, there's a restock coming on this place. You can go to this site instead of hovering over this foot app that's going to get bought it out. You know, like I keep it, I keep it real. I mean, um, I don't really listen to other people's sneaker podcasts because I feel like, um, you know, I don't want to replicate what they're doing. You know, I'm doing something that's different. You know, like right now, I'm I'm what now I'm standing recording a pod. So, you know, I'm still growing, I'm still learning. But I mean, I just be be real. I just keep it real. I just keep it myself. You feel me? So that's what they'll get if they they tap in. And as long as you can keep it real, dog, it's easy. As long as you keep yeah. it real, it's easy as it is, man. Easy as yeah. it is, dog. But let the people know where they can find your podcast and find you on social media. Cause you fight the good fight, dog. I ain't really want to talk about it on too much, man. But you fight the good fight on there, bro. I really, I be wanting to get into it too, man. But I feel like, man, let the people do what they do, man. But I appreciate you going at them, man. I appreciate yeah. you going at them. Let the people know where they can follow you at on Twitter, man. Good follow, dog. Good follow, man. Oh yeah, appreciate it. Um, so my podcast is through almost every podcast app but you know to give you a couple of um particulars you have the apple podcast and app spotify overcast google and also the anchor app which is um, where i record so if you're looking into start your podcast anchor is a good app to go um a good beginner app to go um i use it too yeah my social media for the pod you can find it on instagram and twitter it is sauce kicks pod and then for my personal you can find my twitter um at uf sauce Right, I got you, man. Sauce, man. I appreciate you one more time, man. I appreciate it, dog. But dog, oh, yeah. what you want to end this uh episode with? What song you want to end it with? Um, shoot, we can go Family Over Money by Babyface Ray. Man, you know what? I've been meaning to get into Babyface Ray, dog. Listen, Babyface is hard, bro. It's it, man, listen, Detroit, like I love Chicago and New York rap and also the South because you know I'm from the South, but Bro, Detroit, they got some, they got some heavy hitters over there, man. I mean, so I had my cousin on CLB Cam, and his family, his other side of his family, his mom's side, they're from. Um, he's actually out of Jacksonville. His brother actually um is walking on the um FSU. He just got the preferred okay. walk on the FSU. Um, so he's up there starting. Shout out to Dylan, man. But Cam, uh, they be up there in um Detroit. He was telling me on the episode we did about how how much man Detroit music is. Really, people had to get on it, man. Yeah, it slept on for real. Like, they got another guy, like, on um, Baby Smooth. Like, man, I'm telling you, that music, it's good to vibe to. Now, I ain't listen to it all day because I like variety. Like, I like jazz and everything else, too. But when, when I'm feeling some rap, man, I, if I'm not listening to Chicago or New York or the South, then I got that on. What kind of jazz music do you like? What kind of jazz music do you like? Oh, man, I love Miles Davis, The Cold Train. Um, and I'm still researching other artists, but those are top two I can name off the top of my head. Is that a Jacksonville thing? Jazz music? I don't, I don't even think it's because of ja- um, Jacksonville, dog. Because, like, growing up, like like I said, like, music is something I always listen to. The only thing that kind of persuaded me away from music, like, pursuing it, was I couldn't read music. But playing it, I love hearing it. Um, I grew up loving the sax. That's the instrument I wanted to play. But because I played football, I couldn't do football and band. Like, they told me I had to pick. So I was like, football, like, duh. But um, I just never got back into it. But, you know, I have a lot of cousins, um, relatives 
that play the bass, the guitar, they can drum. Matter of fact, um, my cousin Jerry from the, on the timeline, his mom can sing, our cousins can sing. We got cousins that play instruments. Matter of fact, he can beat the drums, he can play the piano and the organ. Like it's, I guess, crazy. Church background, all oh, big church background. That's what it is, man. That's why the church, man. I'm trying, hey, man, I don't go to church, but I listen, I watch it every Sunday. Cause dog, yeah. boy, that's you need it in your soul sometimes, bro. You yeah. need it in your soul, man. And you learn a lot of things in the, in the church house, man. Learn a lot of things in the church house, man. But we are gonna end it with with family over money, baby face, Ray Sauce, man. I appreciate one, appreciate you one more time, dog. I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on, man. This was a great episode, man. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me, man. Smoke Screen Podcast. Checking on YouTube, uh, Apple, all that, man. We everywhere, dog. Share it, man. Tell people about it, man. We trying to drop it. We smoke screen. We dropping whatever we want to around here, man. You might get four, five episodes a week, though. That's how we got to do it, man. Got to get. Don't forget the aftermath. Don't forget the aftermath. Oh yeah, aftermath. That's all, man. They already know about the aftermath, bro. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you rocking with the aftermath, man. I appreciate your thoughts, man. The aftermath. Shout out to T, man. T and T and the fam, man. His his anniversary is this week. It's gonna come. It'll be past from dropping this, so it'll be past for his anniversary, man. But shout out to T, man, with Aftermath Podcast, man. I appreciate y'all. It's another episode of Smoke Screen Podcast, kicking it with sauce, man. I appreciate you, so. For sure.